What's up guys, it's King Josh back with another video. Today I'm going to show you guys the most versatile point guard build in NBA 2K21. So before this video starts, make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn post notifications on, and let's get right into the video. If you guys did play NBA 2K20, you know that this pie chart right here was really good, but in NBA 2K21, this one with more finishing and a little bit less shooting is actually a lot better because the driving dunk goes up a little bit, the ball control goes up a little bit, and the shooting does drop, but the fact that the driving dunk and the ball control go up a little bit can help you get contact dunks and speed boost as you guys will see later in the video so you are going to want to choose this third pie chart right here for the physical pie chart you guys do want to choose the top pie chart just so you're as fast as possible on this build for the finishing badges you want to max out your driving layup max out your driving dunk and put your close shot up until you get 13 finishing badges then for the shooting you want to max out your mid-range max out your three and put your post fade up until you get 13 shooting badges for the playmaking badges, you do want to max out your ball handle, and you can just max out your pass accuracy and put it down by one, or you can just put it up until you hit 13 playmaking badges. And then for the defense, you want to put up your interior defense, your perimeter defense, your lateral quickness, steal, block, and defensive rebound. You want to have all those maxed out, and then just put the remaining points to your offensive rebound, so you can get eight defensive badges, which is amazing on a build that doesn't even have lockdown in the pie chart. So for the height on this build, you actually do want to go six foot three because if you do go any taller than six foot three, I actually try it. I tested all this out. But if you go six foot four or taller, you can't get contact dunks and speed boost. You can do one of them. Like if you lower your wingspan all the way, you can speed boost. And if you put it up all the way, you can get contact dunks. But you can't do both unless you're six foot three. Now for the weight, you want to go 172 or 173 because you do get plus 1 to your strength and plus 1 to your perimeter defense. For the wingspan on this build, you want to go up 3 from the default, which probably sounds crazy. As you can see right here, this is 2 up from the default. But if you go 2 up from the default, you get an 81 contact dunk, which will be 85 at 99 overall, and an 82 ball control, which will be 86 at 99 overall. But right here, if you do go up by 3, your shooting doesn't drop, your ball handle doesn't drop, and you get plus one to your contact dunk again. So if you go plus three from the default, you can actually get contact dunks at 98 overall, and you can speed boost at 99 overall. And this is why I think this is the most versatile build in the game. You get contact dunks, you can shoot because you'll have an 81 three-pointer at 99 overall with all those shooting badges. You'll be able to dribble just fine, you can speed boost, and with your defense, you have an 81 perimeter defense, and look at the takeovers right here. You can get slasher takeover, you can get shot creator takeover, playmaker takeover, and lock down takeover so even without lockdown takeover you can clamp up but honestly on this build i think if you're going to choose a weak point it's probably defense just because it has the least defensive badges out of everything so i decided to go with lockdown takeover on this build that's probably the best takeover to round it out make it the most versatile you can go with any takeover though any takeover is really good on this build but i decided to go with lockdown takeover another good thing about this build is that if you do choose lockdown takeover people are going to see your build they're going to be like oh it's a slasher and it has lock takeover so it must be a finisher and lockdown build so they're not going to know that you'll be able to dribble and they're not going to know that you'll be able to shoot so this build is kind of like a lock slasher in disguise but they're not going to know that you're a sharp slasher that can dribble and play defense for the finishing badges on this build you probably want to go acrobat hall of fame contact finisher hall of fame slithery finisher hall of fame and with the bronze badge you can either go lob city finisher fancy footwork giant slayer or relentless finisher I would probably go Fancy Footwork just because Fancy Footwork works really well with Acrobat, but honestly, if you choose one of these four as your bronze badge, you'll be perfectly fine. For the shooting badges, it sounds like it's bad because you only have 13, but the three-pointer will be good, and you'll definitely be able to shoot if you choose Catch and Shoot, Deadeye, Hot Zone Hunter, Range Extender, and then for your bronze badge, you probably want to put Green Machine. Also, if you really wanted to, I might actually do this. You could lower Deadeye to bronze and then put green machine to gold. That might be better. I'm going to test out the badges and I'm probably going to make this build. It might not be my first build, but I think I'm going to make this build. So once I do make this build, I'll let you guys know my badge setup, my dribble moves, all that stuff on this build. For the playmaking badges, I would put Bailout Bronze on pretty much any guard build. You can put Dimer Gold if you want to, but I think the necessities on this build are Handles for Days Gold and Quick First Step Gold. Then I put Unpluckable Gold, I think that's a really good badge. And if you want to use some other bronze badges like Lob City Passer or Space Creator, you should probably just lower Dimer because it is a good badge, but it's not needed. And I think Unpluckable, Quick First Step, and Handles for Days are better, and Bailout Bronze is a must on any guard build. Now for the defense, for sure you are going to want Clamps Gold. You want Intimidator at least Silver, and then if you do 
do want other bronze badges, you're probably going to want to put Rim Protector, Chase Stone Artist, and then maybe Rebound Chaser. But if you don't want Rebound Chaser, I suggest just putting Intimidator Gold. You could really work with that. But as long as you have Clamps Gold and Intimidator, at least Silver on this build, maybe even Gold, I think you'll be fine. Also, if you don't want to put Intimidator Gold, I suggest putting Chase Stone Artist Silver. I wouldn't put Rebound Chaser or Rim Protector Silver if you do choose those badges. But for your best bet, I would probably just go with Clamps Gold, Intimidator Gold, Chase Stone Artist Bronze, and Rim Protector Bronze. That's going to be it for the video. If you guys want to see gameplay on this build, make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'm for sure going to be making this build now that I've thought about it. I don't think it's going to be my first build because my first build is probably going to be a bigger player like 6-7, 6-8, but I'm definitely going to make this build 100%. I think it's the most versatile point guard build in the game and also it's one of the most fun builds to use because it can do everything. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you're new. It's been King Josh and I'm out. Peace.